Um, we're going to take a look at the official U.S. Pond Hockey Tournament rules that we plan to adapt to our version, our variation of the game, which is, uh, which we still haven't named officially. We'll call it Pinoy Yenlain Hockey, Pinoy Street Hockey or something like that. Uh, as you can see from the post that this is included in, and for those people who are watching on YouTube, this is part of a blog post which we'll probably put in the description box down there if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, we're going to go through the rules, even though it's already linked in the blog post itself. We're going to go through the rules. I had it printed out right here. We're going to go through the rules and we're going to discuss and we're going to see how we can ad adapt it to our game. Um, Okay, first rule, the winner of a captain's coin toss will determine which goal to defend. Teams will switch goals after the first half. Yeah. Number two, all players must wear helmets and hockey skates. Protective equipment is optional but highly recommended because it's a collision sport. Even though people don't really intend to collide with each other, it is still a collision sport. And by hockey skates, we mean, you know, inline hockey skates. Mm. Excuse me. No goalie equipment or goalie sticks permitted. This makes a lot of sense because the goal is two inches high. And there will be no goaltending. All teams must have light and dark jerseys or uniforms. I think we could institute this for our pickup street game because that way when we pick teams we know which who, pl who plays where. It's going to be like lights versus darks. Or if you want, shirts versus skins, or whatever. Doesn't matter. There will be one off-ice pond official to monitor the play. Scoring, time, puck reset, and arbiter of infractions. Yeah, we don't need this for a pickup game. No. But if we have a tournament, wink, wink, we're going to need to have somebody do that. Six. Also not particularly part of the, you know, pickup game, but could we could make it into part of a tournament if we ever have one. Referees will have the discretion to also award a penalty shot, a, a penalty shot, to the opposing team when a minor penalty or flagrant and or a team or a team is consistently playing in a reckless manner. A penalty shot shall be taken from center ice and must be attempted within 30 seconds of the penalty being called. Anyone on the opposing team can take a shot. The team that is awarded the penalty shot will also be given possession of the puck following the penalty shot attempt regardless of the outcome of the shot. Uh, and number, number seven, any major penalty which includes any action that could possibly injure another player will result in that player being ejected from the tournament. A team that received the ejection will play out the remainder of the tournament short-handed, three versus four. Off-ice pond official will determine major penalties. So somebody has to be off the rink in this case. I mean, this is written down for the pond hockey tournament, so it says off ice, but I mean off rink. And once again, for the, you know, for the pickup game, we don't really need officials. We just call our own fouls and stuff. And maybe it, just to, just to, um, and maybe just, just to make it a little bit better, just to make it easier, maybe we just give like penalties, like, like, you know, like, we just have like a penalty box or something um, or we just have power plays instead of penalty shots because it looks very because the their definition of penalty shot here is kind of it's, it's kind of difficult to understand anyway moving on uh, eight abusive officials will be considered a major penalty that includes yelling swearing and arguing about calls not once again not pertinent to us uh, here is something more pertinent number nine no checking is allowed such action will result in a minor penalty unless deemed serious enough to be a major penalty. Okay, that, that second part probably isn't, you know, important. Um, number 10. No slap shots allowed. Such action will result in a minor penalty. So nobody shoots slappers. Okay? And like I was mentioning in the post, the goals are very small and the holes that, the holes that you can put the puck or the ball through are so small that you can't even really shoot wrist shots so you have to so it really emphasizes passing because to be able to get the the ball or puck on target you might have to feather it 
you have to have to feather a pass. You just have to throw a pass there. You know, it's just, it, it's just a pass. It, it teaches you how to become like a accurate passer, I guess. Um, number eleven, players cannot fall or lay on the ice in an effort to protect the goal area. Such action will result in a minor penalty. Yeah, the, no goaltending basically, um, which is actually number twelve. We'll put it together. Number twelve, goaltending is not allowed. A player may not patrol, camp out, or remain stationary in the crease area and act as a goaltender. A defender may deflect the puck in, in the crease area, but the defender must do so while continuing to move through the crease area. The crease area is defined as an imaginary box extending out four feet from the outside of the corners of the goal. So there's an app, uh, there's, you know, so there's a bo an imaginary box four feet out around the, um, f outside the corner of the goal. Um, you can't stand in there and stop shots. That's considered goaltending, even if you are on the edge of the four foot box, the imaginary four foot box. But you can deflect a shot while you're moving. If you happen to be inside the crease, just as long as you're moving, you can block it. But if you stand still and set your feet and block it, that's goaltending. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Uh, 13. Contacting the puck with a stick above the waist will result in loss of possession. I don't understand that. I think they don't instead of, I think instead of, uh, I think instead of face off, they probably have like possessions or something like that. Let me start from the back of your own net or something. Um, Fourteen saucer passes, i.e., passes lifted that are lifted low below the knee are acceptable. So it has to be below the knees. You really don't need to lift the puck higher than that because um, the goals are two inches high. Number 15, if a puck goes out of bounds, which happens, the team to last touch it loses possession. During the restart, the defender must give his opponent two stick length space. Makes sense. I think that explains, I think that explains itself and it makes a lot of sense, but for those for those who don't understand, it's just like the rule in soccer or basketball that the last person who touches the puck before it goes out of bounds doesn't get it, basically. And in order to start the game, there should be a two stick length uh, distance between the goalies, the, the offensive players and the defensive players. So the guys with the puck and the guys who are defending. 16, there are no offsides or icings. Well, the, the rink is very small, so there, and there aren't any lines, so there shouldn't be. 17, goals must be scored from the attacking side of center ice. I guess it's an imaginary line, and you can't really shoot it from, your, from behind your own goal. So, you know, so you have to shoot the, 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 shoot the puck or ball from your, side, from your corner, I guess. We have to sort of put a flag to, or something like that, just to signify where the center ice would be, so that you know when they where to shoot the puck from. 18. Referees will call out the score after each goal. This includes the goals scored by players or awarded from minor penalties. I guess the players can do that. Captains can do that. Um, number 20, uh, number 19. Teams must give their opponents half ice after a goal is scored or an infraction takes place. Half ice. I'm not, I don't understand that, but I think when we start playing, we'll, we'll probably figure it out. Uh, number, 20, two game, uh, ga uh, number 20, games will be composed of two 15-minute halves with a two-minute halftime. I guess it's running time. Um, 21, in the event of a tie during both qualifying and championship games, the play will move to a sudden death format. First goal wins, etc., etc., etc. We can change that. We could probably do like a two minute non sudden death thing. And at the end of two minutes, if nobody scores, we do it again. Two more minutes? Man, something like that. Something like, you know, basketball or something. 22. All games are running time and substitutions can be made during the play on the fly or while the puck is being retrieved. There is no stoppage of play after a goal is scored or after a penalty is awarded. It is up to the team to ensure that there are only four players on the ice. Yes, it's a four on four game, but we might make it three on three just to make it more fun. Um, but if we have a lot of players, four on four, 
so I guess that answers my question from the previous. It is running time, which means the clock does not stop until it reaches zero. Um, 23, players can only play on one team. That's for the tournament, I suppose. 24, substitutions can be made by 8 a.m. on the first day of the tournament play. Oh, wait, never mind. This is not important. This is for, this is like, um, this is like administrative, um, administrative stuff for the tournament that they have. Uh, number 25 is game. It's more of a gameplay thing, so I'll read it. Setting picks in the offensive zone is not allowed. Defense will be given. Deference will be given to a defender in front of their own net where their progress is impeded by the pick or interference of an offensive player. So guess, guess we can't run any picks. You know, no picks. Like, in, you know, the pick is a basketball term, and seeing as this is the Philippines, you understand what that means. No picks. 26. All players must visibly display their credentials during the game. Players without credentials are not allowed to play. That's again administrative. I just read it on the fly and doesn't make doesn't matter for our purpose. Unless of course we have a tournament, in which case I'm probably going to run through these rules again. Or link the rules to my next blog to my blog post. But that being said, this has a I guess this is pretty much explains how the game should be played. Um, we will look back in this video over and over again just to make sure that we get it right and so that when we have a game on situation, we can play and we know the rules of our own game. Uh, like I said, there are two goals and I might make some more if in case we need to make a second rink for um, a tournament, like rink A and rink B. Uh, but right now we have two for one proper pickup game and so like I said in the blog post and if you're re watching this from YouTube if you're watching this from YouTube then I have the link to the blog post or something like that on it um, if you guys know a place like a basketball court or anywhere like a flat surface that we can play that, that you can rent or you can just sort of play there you can shoot us an email at pinoyhockeyshow.yahoo at yahoo.com. It's our email address. And tell us when and where you want us. And we will coordinate with you. And we will bring the goals. And we will play with you. You can practically rent us for free. And rent the goals for free. So just shoot us an email. It's pinoyhockeyshow, one word, at yahoo.com. Okay? Hope to hear from you guys soon.